at supper. Not where he eats, but where he is eaten. A certain convocation of politic worms are in at him. Your worm is your only emperor for diet. We fat all creatures else to fat us, and we fed ourselves for maggots. Your fat king and your lean beggar is but variable service. Two tissues but to one table. That's the end. A man may fish with the worm that hath eaten of a king, and eaten the fish that hath fed of that worm. Nothing but to show you how a king may go progress through the guts of a beggar. In heaven. Send thither to see. If your messenger find him not there, seek him in the other place yourself. But if indeed you find him not within this month, you shall notice him, you go up the stairs into the lobby. He will stay till you come. For England? Good. I see a cherub that sees them become for England. Farewell, dear mother. My mother. Father and mother is man and wife. Man and wife is one flesh, and so my mother. Come for England. Good sir, whose powers are these? How purpose, sir, I pray you. Who commands them, sir? Goes it against the main of Poland, sir, or for some frontier? Why, then the Polak never will defend it. Two dozen souls and twenty thousand ducats will not debate the question of the straw. This is the imposthume of much wealth and peace that inward breaks and shows no cause without. But the man dies. I humbly thank you, sir. I'll be with you straight. Go a little before. How all occasions do inform against me and spurn my dull revenge. What is a man if his chief good and market of his time be but to sleep and feed a beast no more? Sure, he that made us with such large discourse looking before and after give us not that capability and godlike reason to fuss in us unused. Now whether it be bestial oblivion or some craven scuffle of thinking too precisely on the event, a thought which courted hath but one part wisdom, and ever three parts coward, I do not know why yet I live to say this thing's to do. Sit thy of cause and width and strength and means to do it. Examples gross as earth exhort me. Witness this army of such mass and charge, led by a delicate and tender prince, whose spirit with divine ambition, puffed, makes mouths at the invisible event, exposing what is moral and unsure, to all that fortune, death, and danger dare, even for an eggshell, rightly to be great, is not to stir without great argument, but greatly to find quarrel in a straw, when honor's at the stake. How stand I then, that have a father killed, a mother stained, Excitements of my reason and my blood, and let all sleep. Well, to my shame, I see even the death of twenty thousand men that for a fantasy and trick of fame go to their graves like beds, fight for a plot whereon the numbers cannot try the cause, which is not tomb enough incontinent 
to hide the slain. Oh, from this time forth, my thoughts be bloody, or be nothing worth. Has this fellow no feeling of his business? He sings in grave making. Tis even so, the hand of little employment hath the daintier sense. That skull had a tongue in it and could sing once, had the knave jewels it. And could sink to the ground as if twere King's jawbone that did the first murder. This might be the pate of a politician which is asked now or reacts. One that would circumvent God, might it not? Or of a courtier which could say, Good morrow, sweet lord. How dost thou, sweet lord? This might be, my lord, such a one that. Praised my lord. Such a one's horse when he went to beg it, might it not? Wayne, so, and now my lady's worm. Chaplis and knocked about the mazic with a sexton spade. Here's fine revolution, and we had the trick to see. Did these bones cost no more the breeding but to play at luggets with them? My nake to think on. A pickaxe and a spade, a spade for an a shrouding sheet. There's another. It may not be the skull of a lawyer. Where be his quiddities now, his quiddities, his cases, his tenures, and his tricks? Why does he suffer this mad knave now to knock him about the sconce with a dirty shovel and will not <clears throat> tell him of his action of battery? Hum, this fellow might be in time a great buyer of land with his statues, statues his rigging that nicest. That's his fines, his double vouchers, his recoveries. Is this the fine of his fines and the recovery of his recoveries? To have his fine pate full of fine dirt, will his vouchers vouch him no more of his purchases and double ones too? Then the length and breadth of a pair of indentures, the very conveyances of his lands will scarcely lie in this box and must the inheritor himself have no more? Ha! Huh? Is that parchment made of sheepskins? They are sheep and calves which seek out assurance in that. I will speak to this fellow. Whose grave's this, Sarah? I think it be thine indeed, for thou liest in it. Thou dost lie it to be in t 
and say it is thine. Tis for the dead, not for the quick, therefore thou liest. What man dost thou dig it for? I'm a woman then. Who's to be buried in it? How absolute the knave is. You must speak by the corridor. Equivocation will undo us. By the Lord Horatio, his three years, I have took note of it. The age is grown, so picked that the toe of the peasant comes. So near the heel of the courtier, he not galls his kaib. How long hast thou been grave maker? How long is that since? I am Mary. Why was he sent to England? Why? How came he mad? How strangely. Upon what ground? How long will man lie in the earth ere he rot? Why he more than another? Whose was it? Nah, no, not. This? Let me see. Alas, poor Yurik. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times. And now how abhorred in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed, I know, not how oft. Where be your gibes now, your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar? Not one now to mock your own grinning. Quid chub fallen, and I get you to my lady's chamber and tell her, let her paint an inch thick to this favor she must come. Make her laugh at that. Pretty Horatio, tell me one thing. Dost thou think Alexander looked o'er his fashion in the earth and smelt so? Pa. Was base uses, we may return, Horatio. We may not imagination trace the noble dust of Alexander till he find it stopping a bunch hole. No faith, not a jest, jot, but to follow him thither with modesty enough and likelihood to lead it as thus. Alexander died, Alexander was buried, Alexander returneth to dust, the dust is earth. Of earth we make loam, and why not of that loam whereto he was converted? Might they not stop a beer barrel? Imperious Caesar dead and turned to clay. Might stop a hole to keep the wind away. But that the earth which kept the world in awe should patch a wall and expel the witch's flaw. But soft! But soft a while! Here comes the king, the queen, the courtiers. Who's this to follow? With such men rights, this doth betoken the course the fellow did with desperate hand, fordo its own life, towards some estate. Catch me while on mark. That is Laertes, 
very noble youth, Mark. What? Therophilia? To be continued.